how to teach your kids about earning, saving, and investing. Many parents feel their kids will learn about money and investing when they get their first job or become independent young adults. But a better way to help your children understand earning, saving, and investing is to teach them such skills while they are young. Parents shouldn't wait until their kids are old enough to have an allowance before teaching them about money. I advise that parents start teaching their children about money early, like five, in order to help them build lifelong habits and positive relationship with money. By the time they are 13 and reaching adolescence, they should be knowledgeable about how money works. There are a lot of myths about money that translate to negative views about money. We say things like money is the root of all evil. It's not true. The love of money is the root of evil. Money is neither good or bad. It is an inanimate object. It does not have life. If one is evil, the money they have can be used for evil. If one is good, the money you have can be used for good. We say money doesn't grow on trees. Actually, it does. Agriculture is a billion dollar industry. We also say things like money is scarce. Again, not true. Money is abundant. Money is a tool and it is necessary and important to have. Teaching your children about money can help them become financially responsible adults. There are three important learning points that I'll be talking about. Earning. Although kids don't get jobs until after they're 18, many receive allowances, gifts, or payments for chores. These early experiences with earning money can influence a child's attitudes about earning and saving for years to come. Allowances should not be given purely in exchange for chores. Instead, a hybrid system, whereby kids receive a weekly allowance plus additional money for chores, this can help them learn money management. Allowing children to earn money will enable families to discuss finance. If children spend some of their own money, they become aware of prices. They learn math skills and discipline. Saving. Parents can choose to talk with their children about saving in various ways. You can encourage them to save their allowances for a special item that they want to buy or have different savings. One envelope for treats, another envelope for offering, and another envelope to save for something special. With older kids, discuss the idea of allocation and saving percentages. Saving and budgeting go hand in hand. Explain how different things have a cost and require money, and that budgets must be designed to ensure all needs can be covered before wants. That's teaching them delayed gratification. Finally, investing. Explain the different ways they can use and invest their money so that it grows and provides a return. Open a bank account and introduce the subject of interest and how banks pay savers an incentive on their savings. For older kids, talk about buying stocks in companies through the stock market. Be sure to discuss return on investment, and risk. Risk is what makes some investments riskier than others. Speaking with your kids about financial topics and their money resources and choices can help them learn financial literacy. It can also encourage them to form good financial habits. Advocates, I know a couple of us are parents. <laughs> Have you started talking to your children about money? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I mean, again, there's so many gems in what you discussed. I mean, yes, yeah, so um, I talk to my age old about money all the time, you know, especially because all they want to do is buy, buy, buy. <laughs> so that's always <laughs> a good opportunity to throw in a lesson here or there. Every now and then I say, we can't afford it. I say, oh, daddy, you have money. I say, it's not because every time you have money, because you can buy something doesn't mean you can afford it. Mm -hmm. So I start by saying, you have to, have to buy it three or four or five or six times it's to actually show that you can afford it. If you buy it and then you go broke, then you actually can afford it. You know, so 
we chip in those lessons here and there. But I also feel very strongly, and I'd like to advocate for schools to include financial literacy yeah. in our curriculum. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at children abroad, you know, they understand the Naira and Copper from very, sorry, you know, whatever, dollar the currency, dollar, dollar, dollar and cents, okay. or pounds and, and shillings, you know, from very young age. And it, it reflects, because, you know, someone said, um, I had a quote, it was a, it was a gangster movie, and the guy said, you know, before you go to war, you must get your money right. Mm. You know? And if you don't have financial literacy from when you're young, it just messes everything else up. So it's very important that we start to educate our children from very little for them to understand, you know, different currencies, you know, like you said, savings, investment, budgeting, from a very young age. And I mean, so I started it almost like unconsciously, but now that you say it, I just thought to myself, I have to be a bit more deliberate about this, you know, and start talking about savings, about investments, about, you know, putting their money somewhere. And I mean, it was for them to understand how investments work. When you put money, you get returns on it. You know, when you save money, then you can buy. So we start talking about savings, we talk about savings all the time. You know, there's a piggy bank, you put your money there. You have a target, you want to buy something. You know, when the money is all, at some point, just as an incentive, when you have a certain amount, then I top it up for you to get what you want, you know. So, and then that helps also with delayed gratification, knowing that it's not just every time you say, I want, that I get. I so, yeah. So, that's, I mean, I think it's, it's fantastic. I mean, I had money conversations growing up, I mean, with my parents and all. But for some reason, I remember that when I was like in my 20s, I started asking questions around, okay, so who's going to teach me about financial literacy as a woman? You know, you start asking yourself that, will my, will my, will my wants and my needs ever be met? Am mm -hmm. I having enough? And so hearing that they talk about financial literacy coming up more mainstream now is so welcome. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I think for kids, it's important that, like you have rightly mentioned, especially if they, well, no matter where they live, where, especially if they live in Nigeria, that look, <laughs> Nigeria is a place where you need to understand that you have to be financially intelligent. It also actually helps you drive how you build your entire life. I realize when they say, like, you know, time is money, you know, that thing doesn't play out, so it hasn't played out as well as in recent times. And I understand that, you know what, every single action, everything about the whole re way we view money, the way we see money, but there's something said about money is scarce and how that, that's not true. And I was like, hmm, I liked, I really liked that one. But the one that got me, that really hit me in the gut was, Agriculture is a multi-million <laughs> dollar. Oh, I said that is so true. Money it doesn't grow on trees. trees. It's it's but I'm like, okay, that is so true. Money does grow on trees yes. and it can. And for me, if there's one thing I'm taking away, especially because for at the end of the day, I've learned one thing that while I've really pushed and and I believe that your mindset, I also realize that one thing that really helps is those actual tangibles you can hold on to to help you and this part about money at the end of it all the whole drama we're talking about now boils down to standard of living money financial mm -hmm. literacy and it's important i really like this one and i like what you listen about how we should teach it in schools but as you spoke i thought to myself that is there a way that we can get financial literacy to we can get financial literacy actually to you know to those area those, those people in the low in the lower strata of life because at the end of the day they're not really understanding that it's not about they just get money money is survival for them mm. money today i survive i eat daily income daily money but i'm just thinking that as you said it and everything just it's that when told us that is there a way to actually push mm -hmm. for this financial literacy as a life skill for these people it suddenly changes the scarcity mentality anyway i mean a lot we'll say your thoughts on this yeah do you talk about naira redesign yeah so i <laughs> have to uh, delay a little bit from where you guys are coming from so i'll use myself as uh, a typical example uh growing up was not that difficult it was so difficult because um i have a parent my, my late dad is always go to school and good grades so that you can get good job, you know. But for me, I um, I was lucky to be able to discover myself as old as five. And what I see is um, at the long run, I, I try to solve problems. And in terms, I skip myself up to get, because what you don't, you don't have, you can't give. So that I can at least solve a problem, get a skill, solve a problem and make and earning from it. Mm -hmm. I was able to discover that money that you dash me, I spend it so quickly, but money that I work for, I keep it so dearly, mm -hmm. right? And it was when I was in university, I met someone who made me understand that your parents are just overprotective. They don't want you to be too exposed to, you know, to money and 
that is one of the reasons why they are trying to tell you just focus on your book and what have you. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it on another angle, a typical farmer in, uh, in the village, what they are thinking of about money is to solve a problem and see they want to have more harvest so that more people can eat. And when they get more money from their harvest, they try to get more land so that they can cultivate more workers and solve more problems, mm -hmm. you know. So I think if we look at it from that perspective, not just the financial literacy, yeah, the need for you to get necessary skill, necessary, uh, you know, potential, uh, uh, helping people to discover themselves, necessary potential, and teach them how they can monetize those potential, you know, and how, what valuable those potential is. It's far better than saying, you know, in theoretical, this is how money is being spent, you invest. You know, once you know your potential, you know which investment yourself to, you know, to invest in or not. You just need little guidance. That's my own perspective of this money matters. And I can agree with Tito that I says money goes on three. I, I know how more <laughs> billions of naira is in like agriculture. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's an industry that I'm ready, you know, I'm willing, I've been working towards to venture into beyond financial uh digital financial services that are in an ICT yeah. I want to do agriculture. That is oil work, the next oil work for people who know. Awesome. Anyway. Awesome. Yeah, so anyway. I I just want to conclude by saying when we teach our children, we send them to school to learn great things and learn how to earn money, teach them how to save and invest that money. For me I think that this is one skill that would definitely be useful for Nigeria, for Nigerians, for the generations to come, because where you can get a good handle on money, you can get a good handle on the person's entire life. So up next is Tolu to talk about what his advocacy is for today. Mm -hmm.